more, let's do more, let's do more. Hey, hey, welcome to this segment. I am your host, Dr. Marshall, and we are here because we are talking to people who do more. For the Facebook friends, you have been with us all week long, uh, all night long, as we did this live taping. For our TV land pe people, we want you to know that you can see this next Wednesday, and you, can, you will be watching it as we are talking with the Chestnuts from Lakewood tonight. We're talking to Lamont Chestnut and to Net Chestnut because they have been sharing with us their work, They've been sharing with us their walk with Christ, amen, and their transformed wheels to complete the work <laughs> that God has given them. And we want to say welcome, 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 and thank you for coming. Thank you for and, having and us. And you've been hanging out with Auntie tonight for a while. We're trying, <laughs> <to> <laughs> we're trying to do something here, and we're trying to uh, make some changes a little bit. But I want to say um, your testimonies have been enlightening, and thank you for sharing from the bottom of my, of my heart. I'm grateful because people never know. People think that we press, we jump out of the sky. And we are ended up doing what we're doing not, without knowing the struggles that we've been right. through, not knowing that all the changes that we we've sent ourselves through. Because God didn't go through no changes, I promise you. Mm. But all the changes <laughs> we sent ourselves through, Amen. Mm. In order to get to the point of which He's called us, and then to get to the point where we say there's, we're at the point of no return, Amen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that we all feel like today is that yeah. Yeah. I've come too far to turn around, <laughs> and I can't not stop now. I must run on. To see what the end's gonna be, as yeah. the old folks would say. She say amen because she could remember that in the old. <laughs> would you, where was that church at? In the what? So it, it, it was in, in some of the, the places. In feed. The feed store. The feed oh, store. The feed in store, the feed store. Like store. Like store. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That was washboards day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But I I know that there are a lot of us who go to church every single Sunday. And when we come out of the church house, we go home and we watch football, basketball, baseball. And I'm not knocking none of that. Well, hold up for you start some stuff. Okay. I'm just simply <laughs> saying that's where we go. But all week long, we have not really done our best to reach the souls that we could reach for the kingdom of God. This particular couple, Lamont and Annette, are doing a great work here in Houston and they're committed because they do it every single Saturday and they've been doing it consistently for how many months since November since November of last year having a heart I can speak a little bit and then I'm gonna give it up all right um, uh, uh, Lamont in particular she been saved for a long time, all right? He been saved, but he wasn't walking in. She wasn't walking perfect. But Lamont was not a person <laughs> that I could see going to the streets feeding the homeless. I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm just going <laughs> to tell the truth, all right? He always had a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. He always maintained that lifestyle. And he always put in what was necessary in a, in a legal matter in order to keep <laughs> that lifestyle. Okay? And I just need to make it plain. All right? I want to buy it. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. All right? Doing uh, what he thought was right as a husband, as a father, mm -hmm. maintaining his home and his family, and providing the very, very best for his family. And now that he's sold out for God, He's found out that God is helping him to provide the very, very best at less effort. Hello, somebody. Amen. Yeah, and less effort and more increase. Amen. Yeah. And so we thank God for that because when you sell out to God, God has a responsibility to make good on his word. Amen. He said the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you might have life and that you might have that more, life more abundantly. And that's what we're seeing, the fruit of your surrenderance unto him. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, seven months ago you got involved. You got yes. really involved yes. with feeding the homeless. We, yes. We did. So um, I, did, I didn't know uh, a year ago exactly what her sister's ministry was, was about. And so uh, a year ago when I surrendered to God, I, I told you that the best that I was hoping for was to go to church consistently and, and pay my tithes because I had never done it. I had never attended church regularly uh, for any length of time, and I, I can't recall a time where I consistently paid tithes. And so that, that was my goal. Um, but as you begin to, to transform into the will of God, um, as you get... Um, closer to God and God draws closer to you, then you're in line to accept your assignment, right? Yes. And yes. shortly thereafter, around September, you know, God had put it into my heart to, to help the homeless. And uh, we were looking at different... Tell me about that, though. He just put it in your heart. I mean, like, where did that... Did that come out of prayer, seeking a purpose? Or it, it, how did it just drop? It, it came <laughs> out of Matthew 25. That's what I want to know. 38 through 41, That's what I want. when Jesus gives a parable of 
um, of the sheep mm -hmm. and uh, separating the, um, the, the sheep, from, sheep from the goats. And when I read that, um, in the Amplified Version, um, that, that section of the Bible is titled, entitled, The Judgment. And that, that got my attention because this is how God is going to judge you. Right? <laughs> I read that a couple of times, but never under the um, entitlement of the judgment. And so when, when you read that, you know, Jesus talks about, you know, um, those, the, the sheep that um, we are to take care of. We are to take care and, and feed the least of these. And the least of these are, are those that... Um, they need food, they, they, they need shelter, they need clothing, they need someone to go visit them in the jails, they need someone to go visit them in the hospital. And so that stuck with me in, in, in a way that it set a fire underneath me, and I said, we've got to do all of these. <laughs> we got to feed them, we got to clothe them, uh, we got to provide housing for them, we got to go visit them in the hospital. If we know anybody in jail, we got to go visit visit them in jail and we've we've not had to go visit anyone in jail but we've had flown um, not flown but drove quickly over to the hospital to go visit people and and, and we go out on saturdays um every saturday to um to love on our on our homeless friends and we we minister to them and we share the word of god with them and we pray with them and we feed them and it, we provide them clothing um and, and encouragement and we do that on, on every Saturday. And then every other Thursday mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. we go out into their own environment where they are. And we breathe, bring them, you know, words of encouragement and, and a sandwich and something to drink. And um, just sit there and, and talk to them. And, and they are so appreciative. Yes. So appreciative. Yes. yes. Yes, and I want to share with you that I did that for years here in Houston. Actually, I did it for seven years mm -hmm. straight before I stopped, and that's just because of transition of seasons mm -hmm. um, every now and then. But I promise to come. I promise to come. Amen. Yes. And, um, and because my heart still goes there. I was homeless. So the, my heart still goes there, and, and I still feel like um, that is our major mandate, mm -hmm. and that is to visit the sick. It is to feed the, 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 the hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, it is to visit those that are in prison. Right. Uh, my prison ministry probably has taken president over, of, over that street ministry, but, but the bottom line is that that is what we are called to do in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Everybody needs to know that somebody care. Right. Everybody needs to know I'm not in this alone. Right. That's what God did when he sent Jesus to the cross. Mm -hmm. He made sure we knew that we was what? We were not alone. Amen. And that there was a way that we could come out. Yes. And so your sister got this um, ministry going some time ago, right? Yeah, nine uh, years. They've been doing it for nine years. For nine mm -hmm. years. But you guys have something that you're working on and that you had shared earlier. And that is a mission to help to end the homelessness, or at least at, at, at end it at maximum and at minimum truly diminish it. Amen? Correct. Amen. Yep. Truly diminish it because Jesus said the poor we're going to have with us all. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. we got some chronic homeless. Unfortunately, but yes. we do. We have some that don't want to come off the streets, and we have some who right. don't want to stay there. But it's because they feel safer there. Mm -hmm. right. They've been hurt so many times and broken in so many other areas right. until it's hard to come out of that, just like we are. Yeah. When we're hurt and broken, we just talked about that on the other segment. It's hard to get out of that, th out of that thing to trust somebody. Right. If I don't get it right, if I don't do it right, what mm -hmm. they going to say? What they going to do? Will they put me out? Will they stop feeding me? Will I, be, you know? I, I mean, all those things are running yeah. through their minds, amen. So to see you uh, do this is, is, is first of all, um, admirable, mm -hmm. amen. But I know it's in line with God's will. Amen. And I know, and you know that because every time you go out, when you come back, you can see that you're blessed by doing so. Amen. Right, right. Um, yeah. the, it's, it's a multi-decade vision, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and you're right, there are some chronic homeless people out there they don't want to come off the street right um, but if, if, if you look at it from the standpoint that it's going to take us you know 10 to 15 years to end homelessness uh, it's, it's going to end one of one of three ways right we either are going to be able to proactively prevent people from being homeless mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be able to provide housing and the three different levels of housing for the people that want it mm -hmm. and then the other way is 
the streets are going to take them. That's right. And That's um, right. We're, we're, we're seeing where the streets are taking some of our yes. friends. It, it, is, yeah. it is so hard to, to go downtown um, on, on Saturday mornings and, and notice that someone is not there. And then you come the next week and you notice they're not there. And then you come three and four weeks later and they're not there. And, if they're not, and then you don't see them on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Well, then you, you know they're no longer with us. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, the positive is we had a major impact on their, on, right. in, in their lives mm-hmm. to where they decided on their own to go out to the services that's available to them. And they have housing. They were able to get a job. And, but, and most of them would tell us, you know, hey, I got a job or I got housing because they're, they're really proud and they, they give yes. us all the props. They say, yes. thank you, thank you. And they're so emotional. <laughs> I, I, I live for seeing uh, a praise report every Saturday. We have at Amen. least one person that comes up to us and Amen. say, I got housing Amen. and or I got a job. That is so good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so you guys are thinking about building some facilities or you're thinking about designing a program, right? We're going to put together um, a, a very large organization that addresses the different levels of homeless, homeless. people. So um, today in America, for the most part, we are claiming success with veteran homelessness and that it's largely non-existent. Mm-hmm. Um, there are programs that are available throughout the U.S. where if you're a veteran and you are homeless, you can get off the streets immediately. Mm-hmm. So we're, they're claiming success in that group, right? right, right. Um, we've not yet con- <laughs> c- um, uh, claimed success in the other, the other groups. The other groups are men, mm-hmm. there are women, mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. families, mm-hmm. and there's the chronic homelessness, right? Mm-hmm. And so. Um, there's tons of organizations that provide services for them. You know, it's more of a Band-Aid approach, but there is not a lot of... Li- mm-hmm. There's not a, uh, a single organization that goes out and does everything. Right. So right. we're going to build a team that prevents homelessness. Mm-hmm. We're going to uh, build a team that addresses some of the, uh, the mental issues that contribute to homelessness, mm-hmm. right? We're going to vil- uh, develop a, a real estate company that provides the three levels of housing that is required to solve homelessness. Mm-hmm. That's transitional housing, um, it is subsidized housing, and then there's permanent mm-hmm. housing. Mm-hmm. And then most importantly, because believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, the majority of the folks on the street do want to work. Yeah, they do. And, and many yeah, of them do. can work. Yeah. Um, but they got a record. Or they I, don't I have the proper... Right have the proper documentation right. or there is something that is preventing them from crossing that hurdle to where they are employable. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to develop companies that will employ the homelessness. We will help them get the proper documentation. If they have a record, then we'll put them in situations where their record doesn't compromise the public, but they can still earn a living. Right. Yeah. Right. And that is so good. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely wonderful because it is a real issue yeah. in, mm-hmm. in in America. And you know, we look and we say, well, eh, that that's what they choose to do. You no, know, most people on the streets they have had a traumatic respo- uh, a traumatic experience mm-hmm. that caused them to be there. Mm-hmm. And you'd be surprised about to their stories. Their stories will bring tears oh, to yeah. your eyes. Right. At the same token, when they see that somebody is trying to help them, and if they have somebody they can come to and share those, those as they pass those steps and as they get the job or they find the shelter or they find the resources or the job placement mm-hmm. or the job training, then mm-hmm. that gives them hope. It gives right. them hope. Just to be able to have somebody to come and give that information to who right. cares right mm-hmm. and you know you heard me say I'm home I was homeless but also I had a transitional house for homeless women and children mm-hmm. and we were comprehensive just like what you're talking about, totally mm. comprehensive. Only things we were in Ohio, and the <laughs> thing is that w- when they came in, we taught them everything from washing, cooking, ironing, cleaning, uh, to job uh, interviews, to e- the whole nine yards, right. and partnered with other people. And at that time, they had a program where you, you they could uh, work for 90 days. 
They could work for 90 days for somebody mm -hmm. to see if they would be a good fit, right? And right. after that 90 days, that employer would hire them. Right. And we have people who was who was working job, working the same job that they got when they were in the home mm. over almost 20 years ago. Mm. And so that is amazing. Yeah. So that work is very much needed. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that um, I, I remember too taking my children. So that they, uh, especially my baby boy, because um, my youngest, because he was at home. The oldest kind of went out by the time I got the light bulb on. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, the, 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 the real deal is that that is his heart. He visits with those that are in prison. Mm -hmm. He'll feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. He does that every single month and, um, at, at their church in Ohio. Mm -hmm. it, it's something that we need to teach our children mm -hmm. anyway. Right. We only gain when we give. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't be God-given. When we give out of our resources, as you spoke even earlier, our times, our talents, and our treasure, mm -hmm. when we give our hearts, when we give the word of God, when we plant those seeds of hope and joy, we are actually planning not just for their future, but for the return in our own future. That's right. mm -hmm. And God will return to us that which we plant. That's the return why is immediate, too. Absolutely. The moment we started helping um, the homeless, all of our problems went away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or or they're still there and we don't no, notice it because right. of the grace of God. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. When you look at helping other people, your perception becomes mm -hmm. different. And your appreciation for where God does have you becomes yeah. different. Yeah. I had a godmother, and one time she says uh, she was in the hospital, doctor had given her up. They didn't have all the treatment for cancer like they have now. And she, they, they shut the door on her, said, no, we're not going to, uh, we don't, I can't do anything else for you. How many times we heard that story, right? Mm -hmm. Can't do nothing else for you. And so she got the, woe is me. Oh, they don't love me no more. Church people don't even come see me. I mean, she went on because she was sick a long time. And God told he said, what's wrong with your hands? And she said, nothing. He said, what's wrong with your mouth? He said, and she said, nothing. He said, haven't you, I made you an intercessor? She said, yes. And he said, well, pick up the phone and pray for somebody. She literally prayed for other people and prayed her way to health. Mm -hmm. wow. Praying for other people. Mm -hmm. She said when she got off the phone, she started running around thanking God. <laughs> Her situation wasn't as bad as theirs. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Because as my father says, that you can always find somebody in worse condition. Mm -hmm. right. So our problems are really our perception of our problems. And right. when we really look at it, God says you can speak to the mountain. And if you have a seed of uh, the faith as a seed of uh, the size of a seed of a mustard seed, you can say, Be thou removed. Yeah. But I'm saying that you you your faith is how you see the situation yeah. and if you see it as God fixing it it's already fixed mm -hmm. if you see it as God working you through it it's already done but if you see it as an everlasting mountain does you got to stumble over try to figure out how to climb you know that old sign Lord don't move my mountain but give me the strength to climb <laughs> no he said speak to it that's right. right because everything that he did he he did it by verbalization that's amen right. Right. and we have the same power to do so even to speak to our own self to say, hey, you not at least you're not in this state. Right. At least you're not going through this. Mm -hmm. You know. And I always tell people, if you really want to get out of your rut, go help somebody else who's in worse shape. That's yeah. right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. You want to say something that? You, you well, you know, uh, our kids. Uh, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Yeah. You know, we look at that, and sometimes that can get overwhelming. Um, when you've dealt with it for a long time, maybe they're not serving God all the way or they're not doing, they're not on the path that you know God has for Right, life. right. And, you know, as parents, we carry that burden. You know, it's heavy because it's family and, it, mm. and it's hard. And we want the best, because we want the best for them. Right. But when you go out and you begin to help other people and you see these people, and I, I see these boys, my son's age, on the street, yes. crack, yes. addicts, yes. Um, wasted on cushion on all these things don't even know what time of day it is or where they are and I look at them and my heart will just bleed for them because that could be my son Absolutely. but my son's not there mm -hmm. he might not be on the path God has for him mm -hmm. or my daughter or whoever it is but they're not there God still has his hand on them. That's right. He's still That's keeping right. them in the midst of their bad choices. Right. He's still got a plan so when you if you, when you get so overwhelmed in life that it's so heavy with your situation, 
-hmm. Take a chance and go do something for somebody else. Absolutely. And you'll begin to see God's mercy and grace, and he'll begin to turn it around. When you take care of God's people, yeah. he'll take care of your people. Ab Girl, you said that and, well. Absolutely. Yes, and he's going to do that <laughs> for all the rest of our kids and yes. grandchildren and our family members, and it's going to happen. Yeah. And I believe that. I believe that, too. I'm claiming victory for every seed out of all of our loins. That Amen. They will be saved. Amen. They Amen. will be sanctified. They will have the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. <laughs> and they will be doing the work that yes. God gave them to do. It doesn't matter. Somebody <laughs> asked me, they said, your granddaughter wants to go to China when she finishes school. And what do you think about that? I said, if that's where God is sending her, that's where yeah. he's sending her. Right. Because the main thing is that he be glorified Amen. in each person's life. And that we do what? We fulfill our destiny mm -hmm. that's all that's from we uh, we cannot be selfish about God's gifts because he we didn't we didn't right. manufacture them he gave them to us right and we can't determine where he wants that's right the, uh, where we should use them amen. amen just wherever he opens the door amen all right <laughs> we um we had an opportunity to go down town Houston spend the entire night downtown on the streets yeah tell us about <laughs> that tell us about that <laughs> You, want, you start. Okay, so um, my sister and her husband, um, and Love Out Loud Ministries, that's their, their ministry, um, and another one of the uh, people that also works every week with them, and Lamont and I decided we wanted to go out just with a backpack and ourselves and go spend the night out with our friends. And so they had, my sister, and they had done it one time before, but we had never done it, so we said, okay, we're going to do this. So I guess it's been about a month and a half ago. Yeah. We um, got all ready, <laughs> and we went out to downtown, parked our cars, and um, hit the streets walking. And, um, and walked. And walked. And walked. And walked. We, we got downtown <laughs> at, at 7 p.m., so it was right before dust dark. So you can still see a little bit. Um, but when it got really dark. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, God, God really opened our eyes to some things. Um, in the dark. In the dark. In, in the dark, and, yep. Um, some, some situations that we came across and the people and, and, and just the natural things that they deal with every day, day in, day out. We see them once a week or twice a week sometimes, and we see them, in, you know, we are on a parking lot. We have tents that we set up. They sit on uh, paint buckets or our chairs for the church. Um, we have church with them, you know, so we see them in a specific setting. But when you're out on the streets with them in their setting, um, they would dub double take. They didn't realize it was us. It, what, what are you doing out here? You know, so um, it was very eye-opening. Some people might think we're crazy. <laughs> um, but oh, nothing, we, nothing we do surprises God, right? So right. God had already gone before us. Right. And, and I say that as, as preference to while we were down there from 7 p.m. to roughly 5 a.m. in the morning, um, we had an opportunity to impact the lives of, of several people. Amen. So we, um, the f I don't remember which order, but one of the lives that we impacted were, were two little girls. They couldn't mm. have been any older than yeah. 10 years old. Let's say that one was three and the other was eight. Um, their parental figures were homeless mm. and they're, 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 they're actually sleeping in the doorway of, of one of the churches and um, um, Parents are doing drugs, and the kids are just running around playing in that little area as if this is normal, as mm -hmm. if this is the way life is. And we, we walked past them, and I kind of noticed them. And I said, man, that didn't, that, that's, A, that didn't seem right. B, those are little girls, right? And it's dark, and, you know, and I told the team, I said, there's, there's a family with some small kids back there. Let's, let's go talk to them. So we... We walked over there and we talked to them and the, the, the parental figures, they were gun shy about talking to us. And so long story short, you know, as we were walking away, we, we called the police and the police came and picked them up. Mm -hmm. um, I, another lady uh, left the club, couldn't find her car because she had overindulged. <laughs> she didn't know where she was. Mm -hmm. She didn't even know that her car was on the other side of downtown, which we found out about two hours later yeah. when her friends finally came to yeah. pick her up. We, we helped her call her friends. Mm -hmm. We stayed with her, or ladies stayed with her, and um, her friends came and got her and, and, and drove her home safely. And then there was one other, and I, and I can't remember, but the, the point is um, God was glorified for those 
almost 12 hours we were out in the street. And, and, and that's right, it was eye-opening. We got to see what happens in, in the dark. Yeah. Um, when, the, when the clubs close down, right. you know, wh what are these people actually doing? You know, for the most part, they keep to themselves mm -hmm. and trying to find rest on the concrete and um, a box that is cut open to lay down as a mat as a premium. In fact, we didn't think about that. But one of the homeless guys saw that we didn't have a, a box to lay down. And he went, he got, he woke line. up mm -hmm. and went and found boxes for all of us wow. and brought it back. And he was one of two people that assisted us. The only other person that assisted us was a guy riding, and I think he delivered pizza and he had some leftover pizzas. And he rode his bike by us and offered all of us pizza. Thinking we were homeless. You know. Thinking we were homeless, yeah, right? Right, right? Now we're on, the, we're on a major intersection downtown. There were over a thousand cars that passed us while we were in this one spot. Nobody stopped. People walking back and forth. People walked pop by us, didn't pay us any attention. They, they'd cross the street and go across the other way instead of walking yeah. in front of us, you know. You know, and that says a whole lot. Mm -hmm. First, I want to say, because we we're getting ready to run out of time, I want to say thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. And even though this is, was not one of those things that we did a lot of laughing, but these are very serious <laughs> issues. They are. And they affect us every single day. The, the two girls, we don't know what would have happened to them with mm -hmm. their parents not being able to take care of yeah. them in the condition they were in. Right. The, um, the what did you say? The, the, la the lady. The lady. We have no idea. There's sex trafficking. There's mm -hmm. drug mm -hmm. uh, um, um, human trafficking mm -hmm. and there is murder and homicide amen right. there is rape and all those things that exist out there so God is pleased with that move mm -hmm. because you help somebody stay safe okay help somebody stay safe and believe you me one day they will wake up and they will remember that amen mm -hmm. those little girls will never forget that you were able to get them they'll they, you know they'll miss their parents for a while but you right. got them into a system that will allow them to at least have a roof over their head and mm -hmm. some food Yes. I remember taking care of the homeless, and there were times that I had to let uh, one girl lose her children, but it was for the safety of their children, mm -hmm. and other children, and that's what we have to look at. Right. Um, it's amazing because uh, the church folks went by the man that was wounded on the road, right? Right. It was the Good Samaritan that stopped by, and that just, m my question is, what are we doing in, as a church? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, God bless you. God bless the work that you do. We thank God for your testimonies. Keep Amen. doing what you're doing, and I I'll, I'll be calling you so you can sign me up. All right. <laughs> all right. Bless you. Fair I enough. I'm not, I'm, I already told you what I can do, right? Yes, you okay, did. Okay, <laughs> all right. So at any rate, um, we got to keep pressing. We got to keep pressing because it is the church that makes the difference. It's not the center. It's the church that makes the difference. God has graced us with something and that we need to share with the whole world, and that is his love. I want to thank you so very much. We love you for joining in and tuning in to Let's Do More. We want to tell you we're very grateful for your support, for your love, and and, of course, for your comments that you give on a weekly basis. Write us at www.mmarydddavidllarryministries.org. You can also see who our other guests will be. We're sorry that Ms. Piper could not be here tonight. Um, there was some confusion and something in, in, in some of the directions. And so we are going to reschedule her, and we will let you know. She's <laughs>